So the rule in Strongenberg is a little tricky, and it really helps to read the facts of the case here. In Strongenberg, there was a stepmother who lent her stepson some money. Uh, she was paying him rent, um, and she to to pay back the loan. Essentially, she took a little bit off her standard rent every month, uh, but she only did this for a few months, and then she went back to paying. Uh, the rent in full and essentially she didn't want to call back this loan anymore um she just she let her stepson have the money uh that's a very very basic description of the facts um and and i encourage you to read it in its its entirety if you can um and what happened here was uh she died so this debt was still sort of she had technically said, oh, well, I'm not going to, to call back this debt anymore. But she hadn't made a proper release by deed. Um, and so her estate possibly still had the right to sue. Uh, or, well, what happened was she had disclaimed the right to sue her stepson for the rest of the money. But it wasn't properly constituted. And so her estate may have, if if it had been properly constituted, then she would no longer have had the right to sue. Um, she didn't intend to sue, but because she hadn't constituted properly when she died, her estate really did still have the right to sue. But her stepson was her executor. I remember we talked about uh, what happens with executors. So when you make a will and you appoint an executor, everything that you own goes to your executor. Um, and the whole estate goes to the executor and then you write in your will who you want the executor to, to give out the property to or to distribute the property to. Um, so you might, you know, you might have an estate of a million shillings and you want 500,000 to go to your wife and the rest to go to your children and your executor is your brother. So everything goes to your brother at first as far as the law is concerned and equity says they're holding it on trust for the people in your will and they need to give out the money as your will directs. But again, as far as the law is concerned, the law, the executor gets everything and then the executor starts giving things out um, and transferring the legal, the legal ownership. So the, pr the problem here is that if the executor gets the debt, or gets the right to sue on the debt, and the executor is the person who would be sued, you can't sue yourself. That's it, that's clear at common law. You you can't sue yourself. And so the, the the legal interest of this right to sue goes to the executor, and essentially equity says this disappears. If it was a improperly constituted gift to sue somebody else or to sue the executor and the executor takes possession of that right, then th that right sort of disappears uh, and the debt is, is wiped. This is a little, this is a really tricky concept because what we're actually talking about is holding on trust for someone the right not to sue them. So let's think about it in the context of the painting. Let's say I sell the painting to my nephew instead and I ask him to pay me back in instalments. Um, so let's say I sell it to him for, um, say I sell it to him for a million shillings and I want him to pay me back in 10, 100,000 shilling instalments. Um, I only take two instalments, so let's say I take 200,000 shillings off of him and I decide actually he's my nephew and I don't want to, him to keep paying me. Let's say he falls into financial trouble and I say, fine, fine, fine. I, I'm not going to sue you, sue you for the rest of the money anymore. The painting's yours. It's, it's a family bond. Now, he did actually have a debt to me and that debt should have been released by deed if it was going to be properly constituted. So I had the right to sue him. To get rid of the right to sue him, I have to properly constitute that right, that shows an action to sue my nephew. I don't do that. I, I just dismiss it. So really, 
as far as the law is concerned, I still have that right to sue. Um, and let's say I die still having that right to sue. Importantly, in Strong and Bird, there's this continuing intention. I, I still don't have the right to, I still don't want to sue him. I still mean to release him from the debt. I just haven't done it properly. And my nephew then becomes my executor. And you know, when you inherit parts of the estate, the estate still has a right to sue. It still has a right to pursue money that is owed to that estate. Um, so if you sell something in your lifetime, you die before you collect in the money, it's your executor's job to collect in that money because that was owed to you. You may have seen this in tort as well, where you've got personal injury. Sometimes somebody who's injured enough, they die. That doesn't mean that there are but their estates will still sue the company or the person who caused that injury to them, even if they die of the injuries, because your estate can collect in the money that you are owed. And 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 that's a right. It's a right to be able to sue for personal injury, and it's a right to be able to sue for debts that are owed to you. And that right is something owned, legally owned by your estate. It's something legally owned by you. You have that right. And that right transfers to your executor, like your money and your property and your rights that are still outstanding, they all transfer to your executor. In this case, my executor is my nephew and he can't sue himself for the 800,000 shillings outstanding on that painting. And the law says, well, that essentially properly constituted this legal gift of me getting rid of the debt. So the legal gift was me wiping the debt. I hadn't done it properly. And when he takes possession of all of my estates, this right that wasn't properly, or this right that exists because I didn't properly constitute getting rid of it, that is that disappears. A little tricky, you have to, and I, I encourage you to really think about with different scenarios where this might apply. I, I've used the painting as an example, because it gets even trickier with Re Raleigh, um, which is not just the issue of wiping a debt, it's a problem of actually failing to give something. So in Strong and Bird, we had the issue of the stepmother not properly wiping the debt. But in Re Raleigh, you've got an un unperformed promise to give. So I take my painting again. Let's say this isn't an issue of... This isn't an issue of me selling it to my nephew and then not collecting the money. Let's say I just promise to give it to him. I promise to give him my painting and I die before I can do it. Under Re Raleigh, if he is my executor and so he takes possession of the painting because as my executor he takes all of my possessions, that gives him the possession that he needed to be able to fulfil my promise to give. So if I, to give him the painting in my lifetime, I needed to have given it over if I died before I was able to give it over, the fact that he comes by possession of the the chattel incidentally because he's my executor, that's enough. It means that I have given it over to him. That is really tricky. And you can tell that, that Swaddling et al. In, in this subject guide don't like it and a lot of commentators don't like it because doesn't quite make sense I think um what if I wanted to not give my nephew the painting I only said that I would again he wouldn't you know you you're allowed to take back a promise to give something if you don't want to give it anymore because all the rights are mine it's my property I can do what I will with it until I give it over um and equity is interfering with that here uh, for perhaps a not great theoretical basis. So that's the difference between Re Raleigh and, and Strong and Bird. Uh, and you do need to give some thought to that one. I hope I've shed some light on it and not confused you any further. The final one is a deathbed gift. Um, they call it a Donatius Mortis Causa. Um, 
I would call it a deathbed gift. And that is, let's say, my painting hangs above my deathbed um, as I die and my nephew stands at my deathbed. And I say, the painting is yours when I die, have the painting. Um, or I say, you can take this painting off my wall, I want you to take it to get restored. And if I die before it comes back, then the painting is yours. Uh, and that's a deathbed gift. Um, it's slightly different from, from giving a gift in life because it relies on me dying for him to fully constitute taking the painting for the law to fully recognise uh, that I've, I've given him the painting. Um, but equity will recognise that my death fully constituted that gift. Uh, and the law will recognise that my death fully constituted that gift. Um, so that's a deathbed gift and that's probably more simple. So do, if you're, if you're able to send any messages, please do let me know if you've got any questions or better still, if you want to write out a scenario for each of those exceptions, um, I'm really happy to take a look at it if, if you're able to get a copy to Millie or Karen. Uh, but otherwise, hope your exams went well uh, and I'll see you next time.